I thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, well, if you didn't know already, what I'm going to do tonight is play the whole of my first record, Steady On, from start to finish. Now you know. First song was not on Steady On. That's a BG song, and uh, one of my favorites. So here we go. China, it's broken. 
just hope it's not too late Open up the gate, I go straight on Steady on Go steady on Steady on Steady on so much. David, you can turn this vocal down in the monitor a little bit. I, I asked for too much of myself. It's frightening me now. I'm scaring myself. Thank you. Um, oh, for Steady On? We're a little late, you know. There was this hiccup in the world, but... But it, 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 it's 30 second is better than nothing, so. Thank you. Um, 
Yeah, Steady On was my first record, and it took me, I was about 31 when that record came out, so ancient by today's standards. Well, I know. to get there. I've been making my living playing music for since I was like 19 years old. So it took me a little while. But I was holding out for something. And that thing was to become a songwriter. Because that was something I didn't do. I was scared of it. And I was good at everything else, so I could get up in front of people, I could play the guitar, I could sing, I could imitate people. I uh, played in a lot of wedding bands and bar bands and dives and dance halls and I don't regret a minute of it. songs on steady on. This is the one where I realized, well, if I just play the guitar and sing, and, you know, the band couldn't be here tonight, but, you know, that's a joke. I, I, don't, I don't have a band, because, <clears throat> because I can do this, and that was part of what I realized at the round the age of uh, 29 or 30 or 30. I play alone and, and play, play the guitar and sing by myself and it works out good. That's what my heroes did, you know? So I thought, what else do they do? Because they, they wrote songs. I thought, well, they play the guitar and they sing and they write kind of personal stuff. And I'd tried to write clever things and pop songs because I love pop music and I sucked at that, it was bad. So this is a song where I feel like I've found my voice and found my feet. Can't find the tuning, but. being live streamed. Hey. <laughs> and you can turn this guitar down a little. I must have really loved myself earlier today at sound checking. <laughs> anyway.
was angry back then And I guess I still am Cause I have lost too much sleep I'm gonna find it You were shining I can see you You were smiling That's enough Oh, I'm holding on to you Like a diamond Those were, you know, we started the record with it. Sequencing is very important, right? So we started with a bouncy little thing, steady on. And then sort of a marchy, proclamating thing. It's not a word, probably, but proclamationatory. How'd that be?
just become a beacon for your soul But the past is stronger than my will to forgive Forgive you or myself, I don't know Riding shotgun down the air not stop there.
This one will fool you. It's a totally doomed love song. In an upbeat, chipper sort of fashion, and in a major key. I got so smart with songwriting. I just got so smart. Danger in most 
So you notice it's a sinister thing. But the wheels of ambition never christen So I went out walking on the streets of the dead with a chip on my shoulder and a voice in my. You can look like a fool, you can cry. 
be the same. Just 
just don't know where to begin. There will always be something. There will. That song, I don't even know what it was. Um, it was in my mind, there was kind of this post-apocalyptic uh, landscape with somebody wandering around. Um, talk about dark. I think of that. I think of the Twilight Zone episode. Where there is a hall, you know, there's a there's a uh, Armageddon, there's a nuclear, you know, mess. And what's the actor's name? Um, thank you, Burgess Meredith. See? They're already ten steps ahead of me. He loves to read. That's all he wants to do is read. And he's the only man left on earth. And he leans down in the post-apocalyptic grayness with all these books. And his glasses fall off his face and break. <laughs> Good old Twilight Zone. My song wasn't that bad compared to that. This song, uh, this song is about family, and uh, I wrote it as though I were singing to my sister, uh, my one and only sister.
Son, but in the cellar downstairs, waiting for the bomb scare, he would hide from us under the kitchen. But she simmered soft, soft, with her weapons of tin, like so many suppers she gave us to him, and he never did guess. In her cast iron dress, she was burning beyond. I did kind of dabble in a little bit of songwriting before I was, you know, 28 years old. And I just never, you know, paid any attention to the little things that I jotted down. Because I didn't think I was a songwriter. I mean, I listened to the best, you know. So I was comparing myself and I thought, no. Until I realized nobody can say what I can say about myself than myself. There's nobody that can do it. So, the same for everyone. If I'm going to say it, who better than me? So, I uh, at, at one time spent um, about a year and a half, let's call it my last weekend in the Bay Area, and I, li I lived in the East Bay, and um, I knew somebody there. I, I, I had lived in Austin, oh, I went to high school in Illinois, then I left and I went to Austin with a band, a swing band called the Dixie Diesels, and a uh, country swing band, huh? Yay, the Dixie Diesels. And then about two years later, I went back to Illinois, lived there for a year, 
and I decided I better get out of there. And I didn't know where to go, but I had a couple of friends in the East Bay. So I thought, well, as good as place as any, I'll, I'll, I'll go there. And uh, I got an attic room in this rambling, ramshackle Victorian home on uh, near Solano Avenue Street. You know it? OK. Um, it was my last weekend. I was pretty drunk <laughs> most of the time. Anyway, uh, I had the attic room. They only had one room left, and it was in the attic. And there was a house full of deadheads, and uh, which I just didn't know from, you know. And they would have parties with big watermelons hollowed out, uh, laced with acid. I didn't go to the parties. And uh, one of my roommates, her name was Julie. She was a deadhead, and and she had you know, long, long hair and horn room, I mean, um, you know, what are they called? Wire Thank you. Wire room, I'm telling you, I'm old. Um, <laughs> wire room glasses and, and um, <laughs> I had a glass of orange juice one morning in the kitchen and she came down and she went, hey, <laughs> hey man, can I have a hit off your smoothie? <laughs> Julie, it's a glass of juice. And I didn't have a job. I was looking for places to sing, but I knew that wasn't going to sustain me, so. So I finally got a job in a stained glass store. So there I was, a drunk guitar player cutting glass. It made a lot of sense. But it's all right. They moved me to the shipping department after a while. room at night after working at the glass store and uh, I, there was a skylight on the ceiling and it opened up so I'd crawl out there with a six pack of cores and look at the lights across the bay and wonder what was going to become of me and uh, and one night I wrote some stuff down I wrote a little bit of a, of a tune and a few lyrics and didn't think anything about them so then, so many years later in New York, I began to think of maybe some of the little tidbits that I'd written and maybe, maybe they were worth something, you know? So I tried this one out and there was only a little of it, but I decided I liked it. And so this song starts with me in the Bay Area at my stained glass job. And it takes me to New York in New York. I've been sleeping fair Lately I could swear I'm thinking clearer and clearer And I've been working hard Looking at my punch card and my mirror Do the 
something that was truer than I intended. I ended up on my knees in this big city I was befriended. I transcended, but I bruised my friends for more. Thank you very much. Now this is the last song on Steady On. It's not much of a concert closer, but it seemed like a good, uh, good record closer. So I'll do another song after I do this one. I won't. I won't leave. Won't leave you. I love this song, but it, it's. Probably not the. It's not a barn burner. I can tell you that much. I wrote this in New York. I lived in New York for 14 years. I might have mentioned that, but I can't remember. I moved there in late 1980 and left in 94, uh, I guess. Most important things in my life happened there, I think. And um, one very cool thing that I got to do in, in uh, October, November, and December of 1987. Well, I sang on the hit record Luca. Um, Suzanne Vega, I sang, ah, <laughs> um, that was my part, but you can really hear it on the record. <laughs> it's, it's there, it's there, and it works. Um, so that blew up, as we all know, the, that song and that record, Solitude Standing, and Suzanne's career, and uh, she asked me to come along for the end part of, of a year-long tour that she'd been on as a backup singer. And it was to be in the UK and Europe. And I had never left this country. So, not that I wouldn't have done it if it were in the United States. I mean, I, I gotta think about that. Of course I would have done it. But let's just put it this way. It was ex an exotic, idea to me um, that I would be getting on an airplane and flying across the ocean. No, I did leave the country, yes. I take it back. In, in the sixth grade, I lived in London, Ontario, Canada. <laughs> More about that another time. So over I go across the pond, and it was spectacular. Getting out of your own culture changes you. And we played at Wembley, you know, arena, and, and we went through the Alps on a bus, and uh, I mean, everything, just everything. Museums, just walking down the street, uh, buying red leather gloves in Switzerland or something, just little things that, and big things that happened. And I met, 
I think I met a king or a queen of Sweden, honestly. <laughs> and uh, we uh, had drinks with Twisted Sister. <laughs> well, I didn't personally, but I saw it. <laughs> Maybe I just heard about it. <laughs> no, it happened. So that was three months of being over there. And, oh, and I had an affair. Mm, I know. And I mean, in your, oh, the whole thing was just mind blowing. And, um, and uh, thankfully there was an exit strategy, you know, because I had to go back to the States. Uh, mid-December, and believe me, it, it was a good thing that, that, that I had that exit strategy, but, but it was fun while it lasted. So I get back to New York. I live on East 3rd Street in the East Village. There's um, uh, plaster com or, um, linoleum, linoleum coming off the kitchen floor. The plaster's crumbling. There's mice. Uh, ice forms on the inside of the windows in the wintertime. Uh, the bathtub's in the kitchen. Uh, roaches. And yeah, 220 a month. I took it like that. <laughs> well, that was in, yeah, 220 a month. We romanticize those days now. I went back home and I'm sitting in that apartment and I felt so very worldly and uh, I just went to a place in my mind that was informed by that trip it was nothing particularly specific in this song it was late at night and I picked up the guitar and I wrote this song Russian roulette, French kissed cigarette, and the silence like an anvil. The things that we learn, but now all that burns is a candle, and the fog melts over the night, and it softens the edges.
beat of sweat runs down my arm and I drink it from my skin It is the most real thing that I feel It is communion Bless the meek Heal the sick Protect the Thank you. That is steady on. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm doing. 
Thank you, Bloomington, for coming out. Thanks, everybody who watched the live stream tonight. I appreciate you. She's gonna play the piano. All the happy couples on their way to New Orleans, reminding me of when we got along. They're only renting time and space to fill up with their dreams.
just go And what the hell is this? Who made this bloody mess? And someone always answers like a martyr Is it something you should know? Did you never do your best? Would you be saved if you were brave? Just tried harder. So now I ride the Yacht 135 to New Orleans. I float a mile above life's toil and trouble. And a thousand lonely lifetimes as to wait and then go on. A cloud to entertain. A happy couple My time went so quickly I went like a split thing
Thank you. Miller time. <laughs> Just sit down.
Night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care of each other. Thank you so much. <laughs>